Good morning, everybody. All right. Good morning to you. Let me do my little share that I need to do. And then I'm going to get started. Good morning. I'm excited about today because it's a new day that God has given us and I am thankful for it. Let me copy this. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. Give me one second. And then we are going to get started. Because I appreciate you giving me your time. You don't have to. So I think good morning, Keisha. Good morning, everyone. So we are going to continue in the lessons that we are talking about the attributes of God. And today we're talking about wisdom and knowledge. And so for anybody watching me for the first time, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams. I'm one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center. And this is Mountain Movers Prayer. I've been doing this for a few years now on Facebook Live. I've been at the same time, 1030 um, Central Standard Time. And I do this because I love, the, I love God. I love his people. I love his word. And I, I find it an honor and a privilege to be able to even come before you. And so I don't expect anything from you other than let's just come in and pray together. Amen. So wisdom and knowledge are the intellectual attributes of God, right? So meaning this, God isn't looking for us to be a people to just follow him blindly. I know you've heard people talk about, oh, you just need to have blind faith. Well, can I come and encourage you? There is no such thing with God. Your faith and my faith should be based on us counting the cost. You hear what I said? Counting the cost and then following him. And so this is where wisdom and knowledge are in act. Let me just say that again. When when you hear people say, oh, just you just got to have blind faith. You don't you don't question nothing. Just don't ask God nothing. You just just do everything and, and have no, 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 no. That's not even that's not even biblical. Let me show you what the Bible says. We don't have blind faith. That's no such thing as believers. We have a determined counted the cost faith. Where is that at? Luke 14, verse 25 through 28. Luke 14, verse 25 through 28. Good morning, Sapphire. So let me let me show you what it says. This talks about counting the cost of being a disciple. It says a large crowd was following Jesus. This is Luke 14, 25 to 28. It says a large crowd was following Jesus. He turned around and said to them, if you want to be my disciples, you must, must by comparison hate 
everyone else, your father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciples. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciples. But don't begin until you count the cost. Did, did you hear what I said? So see, this wasn't just me saying. It. it said, but don't begin until you count the cost. For who will begin construction on a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? This is getting good to me already. Otherwise, you might complete only the foundation before running out of money. And then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started the building and couldn't afford to finish it. Let me tell you, even as we get into this, why, why wisdom and knowledge are so important to be for those attributes that got to be built in us is because, see, many of us will say, and the Lord kind of talked to me about this counting the cost thing. He said, Joel, many of my children, when, when, when we go and lift our hands and say, Lord, I want to be like your son. I want to be like Jesus. He said, do you know what we're really saying in our mind? We want to be like the Jesus that's glorified. We want to be like the Jesus that is sitting on high, the Jesus that has all power. We want to be like that Jesus. That don't sound bad, right? But this is what he said. And I want you to hear me, brothers and sisters. He said this, he said, do you know, even Jesus couldn't get to that glorified Jesus until he was the Jesus on the cross. Did you hear what I just said? He couldn't get to the glorified Jesus until he was the Jesus of the cross. And he said, many of us are saying, Lord, I want to jump to the, I want to jump to the glorified stage, but I don't want to carry no cross because we don't want to be the Jesus that was spit upon, rejected, abused, uh, belittled, talked about. We don't want to be that Jesus. We just want to go straight to the Jesus that got it all going on. But God says, no, 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 no. You got to start by first being the Jesus that carried the cross. Come on, somebody. And without wisdom and knowledge, we don't even know how to walk it out. So see, the enemy would try to make us think, oh, you know, God don't love me. That's why I'm going through this stuff. But wisdom and knowledge will help you understand it. No, no. This is what you needed for your journey. This is what you needed to get through the, to, to be able to be all that you need to be. This is what you needed. It was necessary. Can somebody say that it was necessary? The way that you went through that valley, it was was necessary. The stuff that you went through, it was necessary. It was for the process that God had for your life. And he says, so when we talk about being like Christ, he said, you got to start with the crucified Christ first. Come on, somebody. I know we don't want to hear that because I was like, Lord, that's hard. He said, right. That's where my wisdom comes from. That's where my knowledge comes from. Because then I teach you how to walk through what you're going through Did you so that you can get to where I want you to go. Amen. So we, 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 it's getting good. Oh my, that's right. Uh, Monique, it was necessary. See the enemy wants you to feel like, Oh God was this horrible God. He didn't love me. And, and that's why I'm going through. No, 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 no. He loved you. And can I tell you this, that, that, that some of the burdens that you've bear, some of the things that you've carried, can I put it to you like this? Because I want you to, I want you to come out of out of this place with a little more wisdom about understanding your 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 plight. Can I tell you, Keisha, that the stuff that you have been under, the stuff that you have carried, it wasn't because you did something so wrong. It's because God honored you enough and said, "I believe." which her trusting in me, she going to be able to handle this. Come on, somebody. He honored you, Keisha, for the journey you on. He honored you, Monique, for the journey you on. He honored you, Anne, for the, the journey you on. He honored you. Now, I'm not saying every bad thing that happened, he started or he did, but guess what? He still had to allow it. So even if he allowed it, he knew what it was going to bring out of you on the other side of your trial. Come on, somebody. Thank you, G. So we're talking about that, that, that we need these things so that we can know who we are, so that we can walk out what we need. We don't want to be halfway through the journey and quit because there's too many people that usurp the process and they not they don't want to wait. And when you know what happens when you don't want to wait, when you don't use wisdom and knowledge, then you find yourself trying to take over what isn't yours to take over. You try to do what God ain't equipped you or told you to do. And so we want to walk in wisdom. And so wisdom in the Old Testament, there are many words used for wisdom, but the most frequently used is the Hebrew word, chokmah, C-H-O-K-M-A-H. Uh, uh, 
And the words is both a natural wisdom and a divine wisdom. But the divine wisdom helps the people of God. It helps us to keep what he tells us to do. It gives us the ability to, to, to display prudence. It's the ability to discern. And do you know we even need wisdom for humility? Did you know that? You need wisdom to even know how to walk in humility. That one, we don't think about. You need wisdom to know how to walk in humility. Let me tell you why. Because the enemy will try to bait you into stuff. The enemy will come at you and try to bait you into, oh, getting puffed up. Oh, yeah, don't they know who I am? I'm this, I'm that. But no, 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 no. Wisdom says, will say to you, Jewel, you don't got to defend yourself. Wisdom will say, no, 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 no. I got this. Let me handle it. Remember what my word is. My word says I will fight your battle. So why are you opening your mouth? Wisdom will say, no, 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 no. Step back. Let me handle it. But with no wisdom, we then find ourselves not even able to be humble. Come on, somebody. Ex, uh, not Exodus, Proverbs 10 and 8. No, it is Exodus. I'm sorry. Exodus 31 and 3 says, and I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. And this is when God was uh, telling Moses about preparing the people to do the different tasks. Don't you know that you and I to be able to fulfill the gifting on the inside of us? We need wisdom. See, it's one thing to say, I'm an apostle or I'm an evangelist. I'm this or I'm that. It's one thing to say that, but it's another thing now to apply wisdom to it. So you could be gifted and dumb. Yes, I said that. You could be gifted and jacking stuff up. You could be truly gifted and out of God's will because you didn't apply wisdom and knowledge to what God has called you to do. And so wisdom and wisdom and knowledge, if you often find out they're both mentioned together because these two attributes complement each other. So, for example, wisdom is associated with the know how. So wisdom is knowing what to do with the know-how that you've attained. Let me say that again. Wisdom is knowing what to do with the know-how that you've obtained. So I could know something. I could know how to drive a car or I could know that it's not right to steal. So I could know that. But until I plow a wisdom to it, I can make some jacked up moves on it. I could just say, well, I know that, you know, I got a car and I have a right to drive this car, but I, I'm going to just drive it. Would well, you, you ain't got no gas. Well, I'm going to just drive it. I, it don't matter. I, I know I'm going to make it where I'm going. I don't have to get no gas. Guess what? I'm going to run out of gas. I didn't use wisdom. I didn't use wisdom. I knew something, but I didn't use the wisdom to go along with it. I knew that my car couldn't get so only so far without gas, but I, I, I ignored what the truth was. And so even today, as we go to pray, our first scripture that we're going to begin to pray through is a very popular, very famous, very familiar scripture, James 1 and 5. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given him. Do you know what I like about this scripture? Why do you think God said he going to give you wisdom without reproach? Think about that. Just make that a, a, a moment that you think about that. How are you, Pastor uh, Gamble? Think about that. Why would God say, come and ask me for wisdom and, and don't worry about get reproach? Because, see, I believe God is trying to let us know. I know you don't know. I know you don't know everything. And that's okay that you don't know everything. There's no condemnation that you don't know everything. I, in fact, am telling you because you don't know everything, come and get the wisdom that you need so that you can be, uh, you can count the cost of everything that you need to do, that the way you need to walk this thing out, the way you need to lead, you don't know how to lead. You know, even, even Solomon said, Lord, I, I, give me wisdom because I don't know how to lead your people. As a pastor, I have to say, Lord, I don't know how to lead these people. So give me wisdom so that I know how to do what you've called for me to do. As a parent, you got to say, Lord, give me wisdom because I don't know how to be the right kind of mother unless you teach me how to be the right kind of mother. I, I got to ask for wisdom. Well, I don't know how to be the right kind of wife because see, my mouth might want to do this and you telling me, zip it, close your mouth. Let me handle it. See, I've told people this, that it listened to me. I love water. You know why I love 
water. Cause see, I used to want to just flap off at the mouth of my husband. The Lord used to tell me, Jewel, drink water. Every time you want to flap off, I drank so much water till I finally just said, Lord, I might as well like water. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, help me because I don't have it. And he won't reproach you. He won't push you away. He says he will give it to you. So we're going to pray right in there. Father, we thank you right now for giving us wisdom. We thank you, Lord that you're going to teach us. You're going to give us wisdom, wisdom on how to be humble, wisdom on how to, to live like you've called to us to be, wisdom on even how to handle our children differently. They're not all the same. And so we need wisdom for each child that we have. Some of you have children, you can do one thing, but it won't work for the other one. God said, cause you need wisdom for each child. So Father, we thank you that you're gonna give us wisdom. And guess what? I can keep coming back. We we can keep coming back. You said we can, if we lack it, you will give it generously. So I thank you for this time of the generous release of wisdom. I thank you, Lord God, that, that even when we talk about knowledge, which is next, but Father, when you give us the know-how, show us how to walk it out. Give us the strategies and the plans by way of the Holy Spirit so that we know how to walk and do what you have called for us to do. Because Lord, we thank you because we need an increase of wisdom. We don't want to be people with our heads in the sand, unaware of what you've called for us to do, that with, with lacking knowledge, lacking the understanding, lacking the ability to even count the cost, because we're declaring, we ain't going to start this project and halfway finish it. Oh, come on, somebody. I, you just declare that for yourself. Lord, I'm not going to halfway do what you've called me to do. I'm going to fill it, fit, fulfill it to the full. I'm not going to half do this. I'm not going to half do who you've called me to be as an apostle or prophet. I'm not going to have do who you call me to be as a pastor or teacher. I'm not going to have do who you call me to be as a teacher. I'm going to walk out every aspect of it and I'm going to walk it out to the fullest. And as I walk it out, as we walk it out, we're going to keep coming back to you for wisdom. We're not going to get puffed up because even in that, you're going to teach us, Lord, how to stay in a place of humility. Why? Because wisdom teaches us how to be humble. So, Lord, we thank you for the increase. That's right, Sister Gambles. We thank you, Lord, for the increase of wisdom. We come as seekers, hungry to hear from you, hungry to let uh, to learn from you, hungry to be filled from you. James 3.17 says, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial and sincere. Father, I thank you that this is the seed where you were teaching us your wisdom, that wisdom that is pure, not man's wisdom where we, we beat people over the head and say, see, I know more than you do. That's not wisdom from God. Wisdom of God is sincere and full of mercy. So even as you have the understanding and the wisdom of God, you don't beat somebody over the head because they don't, because you understand what it felt like when you had to go to that James 1 and 5 and say, Lord, I lack the wisdom, so help me to gain the wisdom. And so because now I've gained the wisdom, because we've gained the wisdom, then we can come to James 3.17 and then we can say, Lord, help us to be full of mercy and good fruit. See, God showed me this a long time ago. He said, there's no way you can have godly wisdom. You cannot have godly wisdom and be in a place of lack. Did you hear what I said? The scripture says you will have good fruit. You will have good fruit. And so because that good fruit, that's a harvest, there's no way you can use the wisdom of God and not see the harvest, the return on using that wisdom. God said his wisdom is like heavenly currency. When you use it, you're going to get a return. When you use it, you're going to get a return. There's no way you can use God's wisdom and not see a return. Come on, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then it for we say, Lord, have your way in us. Thank you. Proverbs 2 and 6 says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Father, it is you that give us wisdom. And today is your people. We thank you that we are the receptacles, the vessels that you pour into us, the wisdom that we need. From your mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Therefore, let our mouths open and what comes forth is good wisdom, is wisdom that is full of mercy, wisdom that says, let us reason together. Let us 
us come to this place and be in peace. I hear the Lord say all of this bickering over, well, I got to say this, all this bickering over politics, y'all act like Jesus is on, uh, is, is, um, we voting for Jesus. He, can I tell somebody he already in office? Come on, somebody. He already in office. We're not voting for Jesus. You vote the way you feel led to vote. I respect how you vote. You respect how I vote, but we don't, don't, don't let's as believers, let's stop questioning our salvation because we didn't vote the way you wanted us to vote or you didn't, somebody didn't vote the way you want to vote. Jesus is already established in his place. Therefore, I'm not voting for a new savior. I come on somebody. I'm just voting for somebody, a broken human, just like us to do as best as they can. That's what we voting for. And until we get that in our hand, our minds and stop making everybody God's new Messiah. Stop making everybody God's new, um, he going to save the world. Jesus is the only savior. Can I help somebody today? Jesus is the savior and we ain't voting for him. He's already in office. I saw, I saw some on Facebook. I don't know the person that said it. They said, in fact, the last time we voted, uh, the last time Jesus was on a ballot, we went for Barabbas. So let, let, let us not try to put Jesus like this is Jesus that we're voting for. You not voting for Jesus. Wisdom will say, Lord, teach me, show me what do you want me to do? And then I will do it to the best of my ability. But I just come to say, God said, body of believers, stop fighting over these political things. God is in control. Jesus is still savior. He don't go for election every four years. He don't go. He don't. He's not on. Um, uh, he's not up for reelection. His position is secure. He died for it. Therefore, he is who he is. And he's already in office. That's right. He is already in office. He is already in office. He not. He don't need us to vote him in. What he need us to do is count the calls and then follow him. Just follow him. Thank you, Jesus. See, and I don't and we're not going to fight with one another. I don't care who you vote for. Some of y'all might not vote at all because you don't like either party. Guess what? Whatever it is, it is. I am not called to like you, love you based on your agreeing with me. I'm called to love you based on you being my brother and sister in Christ. That is wisdom. Wisdom says, that, what else does God say in that three and seven says, then it's peaceable, it's gentle. We need wisdom so that we can live peaceably, even for those sometimes that we feel like we just want to knock them upside the head. But God says, no, 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 I got this. Let's keep moving. So Lord, we thank you today. Because Lord, also Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Father, thank you. We do not want to despise your wisdom today. We want to walk in it. We want to, 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 man to see it manifested inside of us. Lord, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. See, I can't come to God like he's my equal. God said, too many of y'all are acting like y'all on equal standing with him. No, 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 no. You better humble yourself, brother and sister. Humble yourself. You are not on equal standing. I am not on equal standing with God. God is sovereign. God is above all. He is He is the creator. He is the Lord of Lord. He is to be honored and worshiped. We are not his equal. And sometimes we begin to feel almost this God complex. God said, let go of the God complex. You need to have a fear of the Lord. And that fear is not, I'm afraid, but a fear is this great reverence. I don't know about you. Even when the Lord gives me an assignment or something to do, I weep. Do you know why I weep? Because I'm in amaze that the God of the universe would say, Jewel, I want you to do anything. That Jewel, I want you to preach. Jewel, I want you to pray. Jewel, I want you to lay hands. Jewel, I want you to speak so somebody can raise up. Jewel, I want you to do any of this. But guess what Jewel don't do? Because I know the fear of the Lord in my heart. Jewel takes no credit for what I have been used to be a vessel. The, the teapot can't take credit for the tea. All it did was boil the water. You and I are just a vessel. Stop taking credit for what God did through you because you did not do it. And I am sick and tired of folks talking about what they did. You did not do it. It was God in you. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. 
Psalms 111 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Don't you know when we have this reverence for God that not only do we begin to tap into wisdom, but then we also are able to practice those good things. We, we learn how to have a disciplined life that practice the things that God has called for us to practice. And so Father, we just say thank Thank you that you are using us in the ways that you want to use us. It, it is not me. Nah, come on, somebody. It's not you. It is God. God is the one. He is the one. He is the one. Come on. He is the one. He is the one that does all the work on the inside of us. And all we are supposed to do is to say, thank you, Lord, for using me. Thank you, Lord, for using me. Thank you, Father. Now we're going to keep continue. So we talked about wisdom. We prayed about wisdom. Now we're going to talk about the attribute of knowledge. So the word knowledge is used in the Bible denotes an understanding, a recognition, an acknowledgement, right? So when, when, when somebody knows something, they are aware of it. You become aware of something. And, and, and I love that, the, you know, the heart of the prudent gets knowledge and the ear of the wise seek knowledge. So it's this getting. So when God reveals himself to humanity, it was really with the purpose of drawing men into a relationship with him. See, we didn't know, you didn't know that you even needed God until he, he made himself known to you. Come on, somebody. See, we need, God needed to make himself known to us. And once he made himself known to us, then what he wanted to develop inside of us is this desire through wisdom to know more and to apply it and to walk it out and to live it out and to be who he called for us to be in humility. And so that was really the first time God really shows himself. I mean, uh, when you really look at this knowing is really that first act is God showing himself to humanity. See, God is, he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He knows everything. Thank you, G. He knows the inward thoughts as well as the outward deeds. God knows all that exists outside of himself. And God fully knows himself. God is the only one who has all knowledge. He ain't, he ain't confused. He ain't somewhere scratching his head trying to figure out what to do and how to do it. However, the human mind can obtain God's thoughts and think his ways. Come on, somebody. The concept is expressed in scripture when it says we have the mind of Christ. That's 1 Corinthians 2.16. So our human mind can receive knowledge and revelation from God. And so this ability to know leads us to the, it should lead us to walk in humility because now we understand first the holiness of God. See, that's the first thing God showed us about himself is his holiness, that he's holy. He said, I'm holy, so you should be holy. He showed us his holiness and in him showing us his holiness. He wants us then to walk according to what he's saying. This is good. Thank you, G. Let me show you the scripture that, that many of you know. Hosea 4, 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. That's kind of deep. That is really deep, right? But let me tell you what I hear the Holy Spirit saying through this. See, as his people. So first of all, he acknowledged that you're his people. So he's not talking to somebody that don't know him, that he has not already revealed himself to. He's talking to those that he's revealed himself to and that should be walking in relationship, that should be seeking this wisdom. You know, I started the, the, this lesson off by talking about how God talks about how we should be counting the cause. He's talking to us that have already seen said, we counting the cost on being like him. But he's saying, you, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. And, and that's the thing of not coming to find what the truth is. The lack of knowledge is not standing in the place for the knowledge to either be revealed or it says to reject it. What is that knowledge? His truth about you, 
the truth about his purpose for you, the truth about his, his body, the truth about his church, the truth about everything in this world, the truth about how you should show up, the truth about how you should pray, the truth about how you should fast, whatever the truth is, there's some stuff that you, some truth that you're not receiving that you and I could be rejected. And God says, no, 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 no. I don't want you rejecting that because when you reject it, then you put yourself outside of being able to walk as the priest that I've called you to be. I don't know about somebody else, but that's a, that's a scary place. Lord, I don't want to reject what you've said to me because then I reject who you call me to be. So Father, we just come today and say, give us the knowledge. And then Father, if there be anything in the way that keeps us from leaning in to learn about you, then help us. Colossians 1 10, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. We want to increase in knowledge. So Father, I just speak an increase over your sons and daughters that we come to this place, Lord, that we remove all barriers. Whatever barriers that we have placed, we remove them right now. I hear the Lord say, see, too many times, and I said this before, we can't cherry pick what we want out of the word. Lord God, help us to go to the word, not just for a book of information, but help us to go because it's the book of transformation. Help us to go, Lord God, yes, to get the knowledge, but then we ask you to help us to apply wisdom to it so that when we hear your word, that it will become alive in us. That, you know, because meditate is really the word is simple to me. Like when a cow chews on its food, it chews it and chews it and chews it. It actually kind of digests it, brings it back up and chews it again. So Father, help us to meditate like that on your word, that we will receive the knowledge that we need. And as we receive the knowledge that then we will come to you and say, now, Lord, give me the wisdom on how to apply this to my life. Help me to walk the way that you want us to do. Because First Timothy 2, 4 says, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, help us not only the knowledge of the truth about salvation, but the knowledge of the truth about you. You want us to come to the knowledge of the understanding of who you've called us to be. You want us to come to the knowledge that I have a purpose. My brother has a purpose and together we are to pray for one another. This is not a competition. This is not a fight. And I'm sick and tired of seeing this competition and this fight with people. I don't care if I don't have a one view, then that one view is the one person that needed to hear what I had to say. If you got two views, you. Thank God because you that's two people that needed to hear the things that you had to say. God says, stop determining who you are based on your viewership. He says, stop determining who you are based on the amens and the claps and the applause. He said, because everybody ain't going to applaud some of the stuff you got to say, because some of the stuff you got to say is going to cut like a sword. And guess what? You're going to hear the crickets. Why? Because everybody is not going to want to hear that, but you got to say it anyway. Come on, somebody. So Father, give us the understanding so that we can walk in our gifts, especially as prophets. Oftentimes as prophets, we just want everybody to like us. Everybody ain't going to like you. So just get over it. I just want to tell you that. Everybody ain't going to like you. And, and sometimes you don't, it's going to be people that's not going to like the pastor because the pastor is going to have to correct you. The pastor is going to have to tell you your understanding is wrong. The pastor is going to have to sit you down sometimes because you all in your flesh and you all in the world. And he or she can't put you in the position just because you gifted. Because too many people feel like, well, I'm gifted. Why, why you don't put me up to do A, B, and C? Because you're not ready. Come on, somebody. The pastor got to be more concerned about your wholeness wholeness, your wholeness, more so than they are about your giftedness. Because if you're not whole, your gifts will make a wreck because you'll make a shipwreck because your gifts will be to, to bless you and not be a blessing to the body. Come on, somebody. Father, we thank you right now because we understand that we need you and that because we need you, you're going to help us in that place of understanding. You're going to give us the wisdom. You're going to give us the knowledge that we need. And we want to walk according to your plan and to your will. And I just give you praise in Jesus name. Now, if, as we do at this part of the prayer, if you have a prayer request, please, please, please put it in the comment. And it is my honor to pray for you. Um, and I want to say this again. I said it at the beginning because and, and some of you that came on late, I, I really want you to hear this. You know, when, when I talked to, we're talking about this attribute again of, of wisdom and knowledge. And God is really saying in this season, count the cost. 
Why did you follow him? Count the costs. Make make your 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 calling sure. Establish and say, Lord, I, even if I had faulty understanding about who you call me to be, right now I'm going back because I have to be a cross carrier. And I'm just going to tell you in this season, the Lord told me, and I, I, I'm preaching a message Sunday, but I'm going to give you a little, a little clips of what he showed me. He said that this is the season, you know, before we would think, you know, God would kind of healing. He was healing our, our certain things in us, certain things about us. He was delivering us and pulling things out. Right. But God said, this is the season I'm bringing out the jackhammer in the spirit. He says, I am jackhammering up complete foundations, complete foundations. He said, why? Because the bricks of those foundations were planted wrongly. Some of you have bricks that's of rejection. Some of you have bricks of comparison. Some of you have bricks of bitterness. You have different bricks in your identity that God said he can't fix that. He needs to excavate that. That needs to come out. And that's going to be your cross for this season. Sorry, I had to tell you, but that's what it's going to be. He said, it's going to be that cross. And let me tell you what I said before. God said, many of us pray, raise our hands and say, Lord, I want to be like you. But they mean they want to be Jesus already established. Jesus already glorified. Jesus already seated at the right hand of God. But God says, no, before Jesus even could be the glorified Jesus, he had to be the Jesus on the cross. And many of us are trying to get to the glorified without going to the cross. And that scripture I read said, God said, you got to carry your own cross and follow me. He said, or what? You cannot be my disciples. In this season, God says, I'm getting ready to jackhammer some stuff up. I got to jackhammer some some stuff up. He said, why? Because there's a, there's coming a need very soon that he needs us in these positions where who are, who we are in him is solid. Who we are in him is solid so that we can be able to be used and the enemy cannot come in and trick us out of where we've been positioned, where we've been placed and how he wants us to be placed. So we have to stand and listen to what he says do so that he can pull that out. And he said, I'm not pulling it out because I'm angry at you. He said, I'm pulling it out because I love you. I'm pulling it out because I want my attributes of love and, and, and wisdom and all of these attributes. He said, because guess what? That stuff in you takes up a space that I need me in. He said, I don't want those things in you anymore because they fill you up with the wrong thing. I want you filled with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So if anybody's got prayer, uh, I will begin to pray for you in this, in this next part of the time. Lord God, I just thank you for Sister uh, Constant, Lord, even as she put count the cost. Lord God, I thank you for her and Pastor Gamble as they have counted the cost. Thank you, Jesus. They have counted the cost and they have been willing to sacrifice and do and be all that you have called for them to be. And so I just thank you and I bring them to you, Lord God. I just speak a refreshing over them right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a refreshing. And I just thank you, Lord, because I also see that as he is refreshing you, Sister um, Gamble and Pastor Gamble, that as he is refreshing you, there's just like a new fire that he is just igniting on the inside of you. There's a new vigor that he is just uh, uh, exploding on the inside of you. He said, because there are many that he's going to send to you uh, that's going to need that wisdom locked down on the inside of you. This is the releasing season of the wisdom that has been imparted to you. You've seen a lot of things, um, Sister Mr. Campbell, you've seen a lot of things. And so God said, because of that, you have much wisdom that you can just, um, uh, put into people and share with people. And so, Father, I thank you for those that you're going to send to them that is going to need to be under the pour of their wisdom and that's going to help them and teach them on how to walk these things out, how to walk like a Christian, how to be the things that God has called for them to be. So we just give you praise um, for what you are doing in their lives. 
Lord, I bring Monique to you, Lord. Uh, and she's just asking you to help her to accept your process for her life and help her to carry the cost with wisdom and knowledge. And we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus, because we know that you will give us what we need. You already said you won't rebuke us. There won't be a reproach. And so, Father, she is coming and saying, Father, I have my cup upturned. I've said this before. Your cup, you determine the size of your cup. You know, that scripture says my cup runneth over. God says your faith determines how big it is. He says, so don't give me a thimble sized cup. He said, increase your faith and say, Lord, I'm bringing my cup as big as the ocean. So father, your daughter Monique brings you her, her, her ocean sized cup and asks you to fill it up with wisdom, fill it up with knowledge, help her to walk out the processes in her life, help her to walk in the way that you have called for her. Father, I thank you for that for the details. I hear details. God is going to give you the details uh, and the strategy that you are looking for, Monique, in these in, in some particular things that you are trusting God for. And so, Lord, I just come in agreement with that, that you're going to release those things to her and that she will be able to write it down very clearly, very detailed and walk out what you have for her. And we just give you praise for that right now. Father, I bring Anne to you and I pray for Malik. Um, friend Chris. And right now we bring Chris to you. And Lord God, you know the need. And we thank you, Father, that because you already know the need, we just pray that you, your, your presence would show up for Chris and for Malik. We pray that your presence would begin to speak and talk and direct. Lord God, we thank you for the wooing in the spirit that you are doing in the life of Chris. We thank you, Lord God, for even direction that you're giving. And Father, I just pray right now that Chris be able to receive that which you have for Chris. And well, we just thank you right now that you touch Lord God, reveal where there's places that need to be healed. We thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord God, for the abundance that you even want to bring to Chris's life. Lord, and I thank you for protection for Chris right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're going to do a great and mighty thing in Chris's life. And so we just give you praise for that. We say thank you for all that you are doing. And we just want to, we want to come in agreement with that in the name of Jesus. Okay. So Lord, I bring Keisha to you right now. She is asking Lord God for your help. Lord, her son was hit in a car and it was totaled on Saturday. But Father, I thank you, first of all, Lord, for the walk away. I thank you, Lord God, that he was able to walk away. I thank you, Lord God, that even now that you touch his body, let there be no... Um, no pain. Um, Lord God, I pray that you would be able to, that he would just be able to um, not have any too much stiffness. So we thank you first for that, for him being able to walk away. We thank you that the angels was right there and that the protection of God was on his life. Father, that's because you have more for this young man. And I thank you first, but for I pray for the car. I thank you for this young man, Keisha's son. Lord God, I thank you that you spared his life. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I speak abundance over him. Lord God, I speak wisdom over him. Lord, I speak direction over him. I speak purpose over him. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I feel like there's a heaviness, but Lord, we break that heaviness off of him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak the, by the fire of God that just begin to, to, to start even in the belly of him, Lord God. Let it begin to rise up and stir on the inside of him. Father, I thank you right now for the shift that you're doing in Keisha's son. I thank you, Lord God, right now, even for a drawing, a drawing, a drawing, a drawing. Draw him to yourself like never before. Father, there's a word in his mouth. That's what I hear. There's a word in his mouth. Lord God, let not the enemy keep the word that's in his mouth from coming out. We speak against the muzzling spirit that tries to muzzle him. And we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing for Keisha's son. And then Father, she asked about that car. Lord, we thank you that you're going to give her the desires of her heart in this situation. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to make, you're going to bless her and it won't be grievous. It won't be something too hard for her to handle and take care of. And I thank you, Lord God, for the, uh, for the open doors that you are doing in Keisha's life right now in the name of Jesus. Because sometimes, Keisha, it don't look like no doors open. Sometimes it look like as soon as you think a door open, it is closing. But God said, it's not that. It's just that I'm aligning you and I'm shifting you. So some things that seem like they're closing, I'm just aligning them so that you are in the right direction, that you are standing in the right place for where I'm going to bless. And see, sometimes we could be here and God says, I need you here. And so the alignment is what's going on 
on right now for you, Keisha. I hear God said, I'm making the alignments because there's some blessings ready to pour down on you in the name of Jesus. So Father, thank you through wisdom and knowledge. You're going to show her where she needs to stand. What is the actual alignment so that she can see the fulfillment of everything that you have said to her. So we come against any deception. We come against uh, the enemy's lies. We come against any way that he would try to keep your daughter from walking and being aligned to what it is that you have called for her life. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just looking to make sure I didn't miss any other prayer requests. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, you are so good. You are so good. You are so good. You are above and beyond what we can ask and or think, and we give you praise for it. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord. I give you the honor. Father, I thank you that you are doing a great and mighty thing. Yes, God, I bring Leslie to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I thank you for the wisdom that you are giving her in this season. Father, it's like I, I just see the Lord just just this is like I see you in like a downpour. So, Father, I thank you for the season of downpour for Leslie, where you're going to just be bringing the wisdom and, 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 and she'll be able to understand what to do with the things she knows. And that's about every area of her life. There's no pocket that she doesn't want your wisdom in. So, Father, she's not just saying, give me wisdom for this, but I take care of that. So, Father, I thank you that Leslie is seeking wisdom on every aspect of her life, even as even with her daughter and the changes that that's going on there uh, with schooling. So Father, for everything for with, with her ministry. So Father, we thank you that you are opening up this avenue. It's like the rivers of wisdom are coming to you. And Father, I thank you because you told me a long time ago that there's no way we can use your wisdom and be in lack. The scripture I sh showed earlier said that wisdom brings forth good fruit. So I thank you. This is the season of good fruit that is coming forth from Leslie because because she is applying the wisdom of God on every aspect of her life. And I hear the Lord say, even Leslie, when you are in your time of praying, he's going to begin to, um, whether you're praying or worshiping, but I see you in that time that you put with him, that he's going to start to show you some things. He said, just write them down. He said, because they may not even make sense. Some of it may just just feel like a weird thought. He said, but write them down because it's almost like I see a puzzle. You'll write something down one day. You'll write something down another day. You write something down another day. And then you're going to look and see how they all are connected. Oh God, you so good. Oh, that just, that just tickled me. It's almost like he said, I'm going to give it to you. And sometimes he don't give everything to us one, at one time, but it's almost like he said, I'm going to give you one thing and, and I'm going to see how you're going to deal with the one thing. Then I give you another step and another step. And as he gives you these things, Leslie, write them down and you'll begin to see how they all um, flow together. And so we just give you praise for what you're doing in Leslie's life, Father. We say thank you. And I bring to one of her son, Marquise uh, Lamar, and Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for you uh, having your way in uh, Tawana's son's life, Lord God. I just speak that you have your way. I just hear, have your way, God. Have your way in his life, Lord God. You know exactly what he needs, so have his way as only you can have your way. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you open up doors for him. And as you do that, Lord, as you open these doors, let him know every door opened is from you. Let him know every door every promise, every, every good thing comes from you. And I just thank you, Lord God, that you're going to use this as a season of really showing this young man who he is and who you've called for him to be. So Father, I just bring praise right now for the good work that you're doing in his life. And Father, I pray that he would tap in, he would receive your wisdom and that he would he would uh, not only receive your wisdom, but that the things that he's known, the things that even as a young child have been planted into him, let him now apply godly wisdom to it so that he can walk it out, so that he can do what it is that you have called for him to do. And we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bring Asia to you right now. Lord, she's asking for wisdom and knowledge. And Father, we thank you because you are the giver of wisdom. And so Asia, I hear the Lord say, yes, daughter, I will provide for you. I will give to you when you continue to come and trust. It's like he said, come and sit at my feet in the time of worship, in the time of prayer. He said, you will hear from me. And sometimes we can get so busy that 
that we forget. He said, don't forget your, uh, your date with me. Don't forget your time with me, Asia. He said, because when you come and, and sup with me, I will give you a greater knowledge and a greater understanding of not only my word, but how to apply it in your life and how to, how to deal with the situations that you face, how to deal. So see, God is not just concerned about who we are in church. He's concerned about where we are everywhere. He's concerned about who we are as a child, as a wife, as a daughter. He's concerned about every aspect of us. And so I just bring, I just lift you up before the Lord in that time of your worship and your time of prayer that you receive that, that wisdom and that knowledge that God has for you. And he just wanted me to tell you, Asia, he said, Asia, I love you. Um, Cause I, I, I sense sometimes Asia, you know, we can be very critical of ourselves and, and we can, we can be like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. God says, it's almost, <laughs> it's almost like he said, take a chill pill, Asia. I got you. I know that's the scripture when I first used it. it said, when you lack wisdom, God already know you don't have the wisdom on everything. And so he's not beating you up, Asia, because you don't know everything. He said, I already know that. So come to me and ask and I will give it to you. He said, but he don't want you to carry like this pressure on yourself because uh, you kind of sometimes compare yourself. He said, no, 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 daughter. I know who you are. You are mine. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. I feel a breaking right there. There's a, there's a, that I feel a breaking right there. It's like, God want to break something in you, Asia. He want to break something in you that you've been carrying for too long. He said, let go of this not feeling you good enough. He said, that's not who I say you are. Break that thing, Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus. Break it, Lord. Break it. Mm break it off a heart right now in the name of Jesus. He says, I love you, Asia. You are mine. You are mine. You are mine. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I bring Teresa to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the ministry and what you are doing in her ministry. Um, earlier, Teresa, you put up the sword and you said, uh, or, or some you put jackhammer and it looked like a sword. And, and instantly when I saw that, I, I when instantly when I saw that, I heard the Lord say, he is putting the, it's like you got double swords. So you like, you doing this, you got swords in both hands. It's like, I hear him saying, he's making you ambidextrous in the spirit. So you are able to do more than one thing. Come on, Holy Ghost. That is so good. He said he is making you ambidextrous, uh, Teresa, in the spirit, meaning that while you are praying for somebody or while you're feeding somebody, he said, you also be breaking. You're going to be, you'll be feeding them in the natural, but you're going to be feeding them in the spirit. So God said he is making you ambidextrous. He said, and all the needs that you have, he is doing. And so father, I thank you for what you're building on the inside of Teresa. I thank you, Lord, that you are making her and shaping her and molding her. We give you praise today, Lord, to know that you are building even a better her than what she was in past. You are welcome, Asia. Uh, God, we thank you for all that you're doing in Teresa. Uh, and I thank you, Lord God. I, I see two people that God is going to send to you. Uh, and I, I believe before the year is out, God is going to send you two people. It looks like one is a man and one is a woman. And he's going to send you these two people. Um, they're going to seem a little, um, what's the word? It's, it's a good thing, but they're kind of quirky. That's the best way I can say. It. They're kind of quirky, but they have such a heart for God. And what he is going to show you is these are these are those that you are about to teach how to walk this thing out. These are those that the help that he's sending to you because um, they don't almost look like they should be doing this kind of ministry, but they have a heart for it. God's got a heart of them. So he's like, looks can be deceiving. He said, but they have the heart for this. They have the wherewithal to be able to do the ministry in the street the way that you, you want this. Uh, the, the 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 way that he has shown you how to do this ministry. So, Father, I thank you for the this to help that you're going to send to her. 
And I hear God say that they're not only going to be help in terms of helping, but I see them also being a financial supporter. So these are individuals that actually kind of have access to some money, but they don't want to just put their money in. They want to actually put their hands in. Come on, Holy Ghost. Thank you. So Lord, I thank you for the help that you are. Sit, sit, that's it. They're eccentric. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Thank you, Armor. They're eccentric, but they are, they are godly, spirit-filled Holy Ghost filled people in the name of Jesus. We come um, and bring you Patricia Thomas, whose son was recently killed. It was her only son. Lord God, we come and, and we pray for we pray for her, Lord. And we can only imagine how the grief she's feeling. We also lift Quinn at this time because there are those that have lost their sons or daughters. And, and it's a time of great grief. But Father, you are the one that comforts. And so we pray for their comfort. We pray for their strength. We pray, Lord God, that they feel your presence with them, that they are not they don't feel alone. They don't feel cast out. They don't feel overlooked. And I just pray right now that you would help them to be able to see and hear and to move in the way that you want them to. So we just give you uh, praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the healing of that heart. Heal their hearts, Lord God. Let not grief or bitterness set up in their hearts, but let them be able to heal. Yes, they're going to go through some grieving. That's just natural. But Father, we pray that they would feel your comfort, that you would gird them up in the name of Jesus. And we say thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Father, I just come right now. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any pr uh, prayer requests. Father, I thank you, Lord, for all those that are here on the live. I just thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives. I thank you that you are above and not, and I thank you, Lord God, that you are elevated. You are the elevated one. You are God. We thank you. We give you praise. I thought I saw something else. I'm looking. Let me look. Uh, okay, uh, Julia, I pray for your ministry right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that the hand of God, the glory of God be released in her ministry. Father, I thank you that you will give her the resources. I pray for resources for you right now in the name of Jesus, but also pray for your encouragement. Because one of the things about doing ministry is that the enemy of our soul wants to crush us and make us think that, that we in the wrong place or that we're doing the wrong thing because things aren't growing or moving as fast as we think. But I hear the Lord say, you are growing at his pace. You are moving at his pace. His, he's not slow. And it's not that you're growing slow for just the lack of growing slow. God said he is building the foundation. I don't know if you came in early when I said, God, this is the season. He is excavating. He's digging out all of our old foundations because of anything has been in us that has made us doubt or question or battle where there shouldn't have been a battle. God is renewing. He's firming up a new foundation in us. And I hear the Lord say, that he is firming up your foundation, Julia. And I just hear the Lord also say for you, he said, my daughter, just continue to trust me. You hear what I say. You doing what I say. So I, I kind of hear sometimes there's some frustration about, man, I'm doing everything. Why don't I see a change? God says, sometimes you're digging through a lot of resistance. So you just don't see it yet. You keep digging. You keep praying. You keep prophesying. You keep doing. Why? He said, because there's going to come a time where suddenly you're going to see the damn break. Suddenly you're going to see if things open up. He said, but you just got to keep going, keep building, keep pressing, keep seeking wisdom and knowledge, Julia. He said, because I am with you. I have not forsaken you. And I am going to fulfill the things in you that I said I was going to fulfill. And Lord, I ask for you to send her help, the help that she needs in building this ministry, the finances. We just release finances over you. This is going to be a season of great financial blessings in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise for it right now. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Now, Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. Father, we give you honor. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Praise God. 
Father, I speak strength right now, even to Sapphire. Lord, I speak your strength over her, even as she continues to keep pressing into the things that you have shown her about her life and her family. Father, I thank you for opening up the doors. I, I hear the, the locks are falling, the 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 chains are breaking. The things that were keeping you, Sapphire, out of walking into what was for you. I just declare right now, this is a season where you will see those chains broken and you're going to walk more fully into them. You'll be able to see them, experience them and, and not um, be fretful. So God says, just trust my process. He said, because I am doing a good thing on the inside of you. So Father, for everyone else on the live, God, today, I thank you for releasing wisdom. Thank you for releasing wisdom to Shannon. And Father, I thank you for even just uh, taking Shannon to another level in her prayer life, in her communion with you. I hear for you, Shannon, the Lord says that as you, as you continue to commune with him, he is even going to expand the things that you see and the things that you hear and how you understand. Uh, he said, but that comes in that 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 fellowship there's a greater fellowship god is asking and requiring of all of us uh, and this is the last thing i want to say before i end god is requiring a greater um sacrifice a greater communion with us because as we commune with him then we're in position it's like it's like i said before it's like putting the cup under the faucet you can't get the water out of the faucet until you put the cup under the faucet when we commune with god going to prayer with god when we come into relationship with God, then what happens is we are now positioned for his poor, for him to pour down on us wisdom, understanding, knowledge. That means we have to be in position. So Father, place us, help us to get in the position up under your poor, humble ourselves up under your poor so that we can receive what you have for us. And we just give you praise. We give you honor. Now, Father, seal these prayers on the lives of your people. And Father, if I missed any prayers, you know, if I missed any of your prayers, I do go back and I do pray for them. So know that I do pray specifically for all of the prayers, even if I don't, if I miss them, because sometimes the thing is going so fast. So Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you in Jesus name. Amen. It is so it is so. So I, I appreciate you guys joining me for today's lesson. This was our last lesson on the attributes of God. And we did wisdom and knowledge. If you missed any of the other ones, I normally put them on my page. So go and And I just believe these have been a blessing. I know they have blessed me. And so um, until next week, you know, 1030, same time. I'm not sure what the Lord going to have me uh, praying and and prophesying on, but we're going to come together. So I pray that you guys meet me here. Um, thank you for those that have been praying for my husband. You know, he had surgery. So I thank you for those that have been praying for my husband and he is getting his strength back and he is doing better. Um, so continue to keep praying for us. Just like I keep praying for you, keep praying for me. Um, I do this out of my love for God. And so I just thank you for spending this hour with me. And so, you know what I always say before I end, we're going to keep praying what until the mountains are moved. God bless you and have a great rest of the day.